Okay, I just want to do a video here, maybe two, on some uh, Thousand Sun Tactica. It's been a long time since I've done some Tactic videos, and I've really been getting into the Thousand Suns a lot, so... Um, of course, some of these strategies will you know, flow over to other armies or other specific list builds. Um, Necron specifically might be one that this is really useful with. So whether you're playing Necrons, you're playing Thousand Suns, maybe some Thousand Sun Orcs, who knows, you know. You never know. Um, yeah. Basically, um, I'm going to give you some general tactics, general ideas on how to play the Thousand Suns. I've noticed not a lot of people, you know, on YouTube or on blogs really do Thousand Suns very heavy, so... Um, I've played a few games with them. I recently just played in a tournament with them for the first time. Did alright. Not awesome, but alright. So, um, just kind of want to show you what I've learned. Kind of show you how to use the army. And again, Necrons is probably the army this is going to translate over to the most. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with, you know, some of the major weaknesses um, of the Thousand Sun army and some of the major strengths of the Thousand Suns. Okay, so what are the major strengths and major weaknesses of the Thousand Sun army? Um, let will start with the strengths first. They're probably the more obvious. Um, your major strengths are slow and purposeful. Slow and purposeful lets you have a lot of firepower all the way from your sweet spot, which is 24 inches, all the way down before you engage in combat. You have a lot more firepower than most armies do at that 0 to 24 inch range. Um, your bolters are AP3. AP3 bolters is huge. That is amazing. Instead of killing one out of three marines that you wound, you're killing one out of one. It's a big deal. <laughs> so, a squad of Thousand Suns rapid firing, a uh, squad of regular space marines, with a little bit of luck, maybe with a little bit of support fire, you can wipe out a whole squad of marines in one turn. On the flip side of that, if you're getting shot at by a squad of marines, you're probably going to lose about one or two, um, which really does start to make a big difference. Um, uh, Thousand Suns also. 4 plus invulnerable save. That's probably one of their their biggest advantages is that while they can dish out a lot of AP3 shots and wipe out space marines right off the bat, even stuff like battle cannons and plasma guns that would normally be the good counter to space marines don't really work against Thousand Suns. Against Thousand Suns, the only thing that works really is a lot of shots. So you have to have a ton of shots, which would kill just as many space marines as it would Thousand Suns. So, um... 4 plus invulnerable save is really key. Um, another strength is they have really powerful psychic abilities. Stuff like the Aspiring Sorcerers. You have a you have a Psyker in every squad of your Thousand Sun troops, which is phenomenal. They are blatantly overpriced, and I'm sure they're going to go down in the new codex, but even as they stand, they're a very powerful part of your army. Being able to give one guy in the squad a strength 8 AP1 shot at 24 inches, that's pretty useful. Um, you taking characters like Araman, being able to fire off three Gifts of Chaos with him in one turn, and turn Lysander into a Squig, which then also fights for you, is incredibly powerful. Being able to put, throw down a Wind of Chaos and kill half a squad of Terminators in one go, that's pretty important. Your Demon Prince being able to use Bolt of Change to pop a Transport and then charge all the guys inside um, all in the same turn. That's Your Psychic Powers are really... They're probably the butter on your bread, which the bread is your Thousand Sun troop squad. So, the uh, those are probably the main advantage of the Thousand Suns. They also have a really, really good synergy. The Thousand Suns are really easy to make an army that plays really well off of each other. You know, one squad or a rhino or, you know, a Demon Prince popping a transport, and then the Vindicator or the squad rapid firing, or a Demon Prince assaulting, finishing off the squad. You can really wrap up a squad or two of enemy units every turn. So they have incredible firepower, and they have really good synergy, and they're really hard to kill. Those are probably the biggest advantages. They're also fearless, which is pretty boss, so you don't have to worry about getting overrun with a 300-point unit in combat every turn. Um, so going then into their weaknesses. Now their weaknesses are what really is hard to work out, because Thousand Sun List is pretty limited. Now you can expand on that, do some conversions to kind of make other things fit with it, and kind of fill in some of the gaps of your army. Um, major weaknesses is, while that 24-inch range is incredibly deadly once they get in it, your threat range really is only 24 inches. That is the only place you really do well, is 24 inches and less. You don't have a lot of long-range firepower, especially not in quantity. That's probably one of your largest disadvantages. Um, another one, you have a really hard time dealing with armor value 13 and 14, and you have a really hard time with 2-plus saves. So, those are really limiting. 
Um, Thousand Suns are also slow. They're slow and purposeful, but in general, you don't have enough models to have enough rhinos on the table to still have enough left at the end of the game to try to get across the board. So with a low infantry count and a slow and purposeful, it really is hard to get across to the enemy's, um, uh, the enemy's objective on stuff like capture and control, or to control more than two or three objectives on the siege ground mission. So that really is limiting. Now while your psychic powers are one of your largest strengths in the army, it's also one of your biggest downfalls because any sort of psycho defense is really going to shut down the effectiveness of your army, especially psycho defense that comes in the form of embarked units and transports. If you're fighting Grey Knights with a lot of psycho defense, Space Wolves with a lot of psycho defense, you're really going to run into issues because um, your psychers with your bolts of change are the same range as their psychic could, so they're always going to be in range. And your things like bolts of change are the only thing in your army that really is effective at taking things out of transports like rhinos and chimeras. Um, stuff like Tyranids that have really good psychic defense, it really does screw with your army still, but at least the, the psychic powers it shuts down, you don't need as much against Tyranids. You can always just rapid fire the crap out of their guys because nothing's embarked in transports. So psycho defense, especially psycho defense that can be embarked inside transports, is really nasty against a Thousand Suns. The Thousand Suns also have no psychic defense themselves, which blows my mind, but they have no psycho defense, so you're really kind of weak to the same thing. Um, so that really is kind of, in my opinion, major strengths, major weaknesses just right off the bat. So to summarize, um, AP3 Bolters, um, they are slow and purposeful, which lets them shoot their full 24-inch range. So your 24-inch threat range really is nasty. You have a 4-plus invulnerable save. You have awesome, awesome, awesome synergy. And you have a really, really incredible uh, invulnerable save as well as your fearless. Your weakness is being psycho defense. You have none. Anyone else with psycho defense is going to shut down half the effectiveness of your army. You are slow. You do have a low model count, which is going to make it hard to get on objectives and hold them, especially across the board. And I feel like there was one more that I missed, but whatever. So that's pretty much uh, when you're short range, yeah. So that's pretty much how I would summarize how the Thousand Suns um, play weakness and strength versus. So um, I'll talk a little bit more in a later video about how to fill in some of those gaps um, in your army. Okay, so when you're playing Thousand Suns, um, there's a few things you should be aware of right off the bat. Um, number one, you are not playing a tier one tournament army. They simply cannot compete with some of the ridiculous Grey Knight shooting lists, even just some regular Grey Knight purifier spam. Paladins, you're probably still going to have a problem with. You do stand a good chance against some of them, depending on your army list build, depending on who goes first, that kind of thing. Um, space with missile launcher spam you're going to have issues with. So you're not playing a tier 1 army, regardless of what anyone tells you. 40k is absolutely not balanced. There are absolutely armies in list builds that are absurd and are not on par. You'd have to be a better general with a regular army to beat them. I'm not saying they're unbeatable, but all things being equal, if they're as good of a general as you are, you both play just as well, you're going to lose unless you have a tier 1 army. So just know that right off the bat. Now, as far as friendly games go, you stand an excellent chance of winning. Thousand Suns are bizarre. They are very strange. They have, they're kind of uh, almost like a penicillin to a lot of armies. They really do cancel out a lot of what people, you know, a lot of what people bring. So everyone loads up on the, on the high armor piercing stuff. Everyone loads up on, you know, all sorts of close combat power weapons and everything like that. And it's just not making the points back the same way it does against other armies when they fight Thousand Suns. So, number one, you're not playing a tier one army. Be aware of that. Don't let it ruin your, your game, because honestly, in my opinion, playing the Thousand Suns with the amazing look they have, the really cool fluff, the awesome color scheme, and, you know, the real fun of converting your whole army to, to fit the theme. Um, even if you're playing a regular Chaos Space Marine army, and all you do is modify everything to the theme and color, color scheme of Thousand Suns, in my opinion, it's a really, really fun army that, to me, is worth the trade-off of playing the boring, obnoxious games of... I went first, so I win, because I have lots of guns, so just know, you're not a tier 1 army, but they are a very, very fun army. They are a very strange army that is going to throw a lot of armies off. Now, tournaments, you may, you're, you know, you can win with them. It is, it is more than possible. 
they're very powerful. Um, but even if you don't win the tournament, you don't come in first, the Thousand Suns are a strange enough army that they really might just throw whatever everyone thinks is going to win down a few places. You might fight them, and they might tie or they might lose when against any other arm, any other army there, they would have stomped the ground. You know, they would stomp the floor with them. So, thousands fun, thousands sounds gonna be really fun to bring to a tournament for the sole fact that, hey, you might be taking you know broken, stupid list that everyone's sick and tired of fighting, and you might not be getting a lot of points, but you might be stopping them from winning the overall tournament, which is, in my opinion, always a good thing. So, um. Like I've already mentioned a few times, if you're playing Thousand Suns and you're really committed um, and you want an even mildly interesting list that isn't just more and more and more and more and more Thousand Suns and Rhinos, um, you're going to have to be either good at converting or really passionate about learning. Um, I will show you, there's a few things I've done already and I'll tell you some of the plans I have for the future. Um, you don't have to be a good painter. That's one of the cool things with the Thousand Suns. They're very simple. Everything's blue, gold outlines and some blue and blue and yellow stripes. Now, they also have, unlike in my opinion, a lot of Space Marine chapters, they have a huge potential to really show off some skill and learn some more, you know, refined techniques, and they really get to pop on the Thousand Suns more than they do with other armies. So, in my opinion, they're really, they're probably one of the sharpest looking armies for someone who's not really experienced the painting, but they're also one of the sharpest looking armies for someone who really knows what they're doing with a brush. So. Let's get down to the meat. Thousand Sun Army is going to comprise of several things. Um, in all cases, you are going to have Thousand Sun squads. Um, granted, these aren't all painted. I'm kind of in the middle of getting my first squad finished, so I've still got probably another 15, 20 hours left on the squad. But um, this is El Capitan. This is an aspiring sorcerer. He is the sergeant of your squad, essentially. Wow, this lighting is crap for this. Okay. See that? At least get the mildly general idea. He's got your force weapon. He's got one psychic power. Um, if you're fighting a lot of armor 14, he's going to be carrying your melt bombs. Um, you only get one per squad, so it's kind of rough. Thousand Suns struggle a lot with armor value 13 and 14, 14 especially. Um, so that's why you'll see some of the things I'm doing in my list um, are really to counter how, how weak I really am against armor 13, armor 14, and armor save 2 plus. So, Spiring Sorcerer, he is what really makes a Thousand Suns expensive is crap. Um, the favorite number of Zinch is 9, so you're going to be wanting to run all of your Thousand Sun squads in 9. Preferably in a Rhino, just because otherwise you're just going to get shot to pieces. One of the few sacrifices you're going to have to make as far as fluff and fl flavor and coolness looks in order to make your army actually mildly effective. This is your regular Thousand Sun... Um, just Rubric Marine. Um, it's probably one of the few models I actually have kind of painted, painted. Let me see if I can get better, better lighting on this thing. Not going to happen. Okay, well, fair enough. I'll show you guys these a little bit more detail later. Regular Thousand Sun Rubric Marine right here. That's what we're looking at. Yep. So, cool headdress, all that fun stuff. Um, so you're going to be running eight of these guys and one of these guys in a Rhino. This is um, basically a sergeant, so it's not an independent character or anything like that. He has a force weapon, which is awesome. It really does help even out the odds there in combat, fighting some space marines. You can kill one or two with a power weapon. Characters are a little bit more cautious about charging you. Um, so this, that really does, this is really makes up the core of your army. Um, Thousand Suns are very expensive point-wise. Um, once you... This guy ends up being, for me, usually around 90, 95 points, which really blows because he is a Psyker with a Force Weapon with one wound and one Psychic Power. Now, Space Marine, Psyker, Librarian, has two wounds and two powers, and he's 100 points, so figure that one out. Um, all the Thousand Suns, as the core of your army, um, they have a 4-plus invulnerable save, which is boss. So that is what really keeps them in the game. They also have AP3 bolters instead of AP5, which means any Marines caught in the open, trying to shoot at them, rapid-fire them, anyone jumping out of rhinos that you popped or trying to get a good melt shot off on someone, they might get their one shot off. You're still going to be around, and a squad of these can level a squad of Space Marines in one turn of shooting. Um, I've even, just at the tournament, I leveled an entire squad of Plague Marines um, with 
nothing but one squad of thousand suns with airmen in it. Um, so they are very powerful in that aspect. Catch someone in the open, and they will pay the price. But a squad of these in a rhino, typically for me, ends up coming up between 314 to 324 points. So you can see how your army adds up really expensive and very fast. Now, I would say two, two of these, obviously, two squads of these, obviously, easily, um, as your base of your army. Depending on if you end up going with some lesser demons, so you have some more troop support for controlling objectives or not, I would consider adding a third one. Adding four is going to be hard to do in order to get actually all the support that you need for them. Um, next up, let's go ahead. Um, oh, your rhinos. Let's talk. Actually, let's talk about tooling out your uh, your your thousand sons. Your regular marines have no options. This they are also slow and purposeful. Um, if you don't have this guy with him, if he dies from killing himself from psychic powers or whatever, they're only moving 1d6 per turn instead of 2d6 picking the highest. So it really slows them down outside of the rhinos. Inside the rhinos, it's all gravy. So these guys have no options. This is what the major weakness of your army is. These guys cannot take a melt -a gun which means armor 14 for you is a bitch. Um, how do you deal with armor 14? This guy can take a melt -a bomb it's a shot in the dark, but it's worth throwing in there. It's only going to add 10 or 15 points to your overall army cost for your entire list. Um, on top of that, um, I see a lot of people online doing Doom Bolt, doing you know, Gift of Chaos, Wind of Chaos. Those are all awesome psychic powers. I'll talk about what some of those do later. But for right now, I would say I would not even look at a single psychic power with your Thousand Sons if you're playing an actual themed army without all sorts of other crap in it. If you are playing a Thousand Sons army, hands down, without a question in the world, your Thousand Sons sorcerers should have Bolt of Change every single last time. You're going to need it in the game. What Bolt of Change does, it's a strength 8 AP1 shot, which is really your only way of taking out transports. And even Armor 14, it's, a, it's not easy to do, but it's really the only thing you've got. So, um, strength 8 AP1, 24 inches, Assault 1. So you're driving around in rhinos, and your guy's standing out of the top, shooting his bolts of change out. Um, it should be noted with the rhinos, they've recently been FAQ'd. They do, in fact, have two fire points, like a regular Space Marine rhino should have. Um, so you're driving around in these, shooting out melt -a gun shots, basically, except they don't get the 2d6. Firing out melt -a gun shots at 24 inches, trying to pop all the transports before they get up on you. Now, as far as tooling out your rhino goes, I'd say keep it simple. You don't really need possession because you don't really need to be able to, you know, moving and shooting out of the top is important, but the extra 20 points is kind of rough. Kind of up to you and how your army list ends up, how many points you have left over. I would say, hands down, combi melt is on all of them. That's what I, that's the second thing I do to try to protect myself against armor 13 and 14. Bolts of change on all my sorcerers, combi melt is on all my rhinos. It really gives them that extra kick that they need to help me pop a transport and then rapid fire with the thousand suns that just got out of my transport. Um, another way I help deal with armor 13 and 14, because this really is one of their biggest weaknesses, and armor eight, and uh, two plus saves like terminators, is vindicator. Um, still got a long way to go painting this as well, but um, vindicator lays down a strength 10 AP2 large blast. It is pretty fragile. It is armor 13, but with all the last cannons, melted side cannons running around out there, it doesn't last that long. Um, but if you keep it behind, partially stagger behind a rhino to give it cover, um, give it possession so people are even discouraged to even fire at it, um, you really can do a lot of good with this. Um, one direct hit can kill a whole squad of Terminators if you're lucky. Um, but overall, this is one of your best weapons for shooting things like Land Raiders. Strength 10, you get 2d6, pick the highest for your armor penetration. You only need a 4 plus on 2 dice. So, this is going to be one of your tools that you can use in a Thousand Sun Army to really give that extra kick you need, the long range fire support, killing Terminators, killing killing Land Raiders before they get you. So, I would definitely consider a Vindicator. It's not your only option, but I would definitely consider one. Um, now this guy's all kind of falling apart because he's not all glued together because I'm waiting for his base, but... Oh yeah, he just fell all apart. But this is uh, my Scorpion. All my limbs come off right now, so it's kind of all droopy, but... Um, this is my Scorpion Defiler. It's made from... I'm just going to take all the legs off. Um, yeah, there. All the legs are off. So I've got the Battle Cannon up front. I'm still mounting the two Heavy Flamers here, and you got the Reaper Auto Cannon on the back. Um... 
I made it from basically one and a half defiler kits. There you can see the cut there where I attached on another set of legs, armor plates for the legs here too. So what this does, same kind of thing as a Vindicator. You've got a large blast that helps you deal with, with some armor, not a lot, but a little bit. It is ordnance. Um, you, the Reaper Auto Cannon is really good for popping rhinos, that kind of thing, and the Heavy Flamer is really just bonus extra crowd control for when you're fighting hordes. He's really good in combat. He's a walker. So, in close combat, the Defiler is a walker. Um, he can hit armor 10 vehicles and rip them to pieces. He's strength 10 with his Dreadnought Close Combat Weapon. So, yet again, another way to help you deal with the heavy armor. Um, he, with the Reaper Auto Cannon, he can pop a transport, then charge the guys inside in the same turn. A lot of guys don't have melt the bombs, and the armor 12 is going to be really hard to hurt with a crack grenade. So, being a walker, you need a six to throw a grenade on, on him in the first place. So, um, defilers, they do get shot at a lot. Armor 12 isn't going to keep them alive very long. But again, when you have a defiler, when you have a vindicator, when you stagger them, try to keep them in cover, discourages people from shooting at them. If they do, if you can keep get them a cover save, you have a lot better chance of keeping them in the game, especially since you have so much armor on the table now. Um, so I would definitely consider a defiler as well. Not the most competitive thing in the game, but especially if you're running something Scorpion Defiler, I just like the theme. Um, now this is kind of a no-no for some Thousand Sun players. Um, the more I've played Thousand Suns, and the more I've thought about the, the codex and the rules and stuff like that, um, the way I'm kind of leaning is, as long as you convert it and you, or you're going to paint it, you know, to match the theme, I really kind of am starting to be okay with the idea of running just about anything other than stuff that blatantly has a mark that is not of Zinch. So, um, you know, just a, really anything in the codex, I would say. You can convert it in such a way that it's like, hey, that makes sense for Thousand Suns. So, this is my obliterator. You've probably seen it in one of my other videos. It's going to be hard to see here, as you've noticed, the lighting kind of blows. But, um, I've got a Tomb King's Yushanti. I'm making a few of these. You know, he's got a backpack on. I've, got, I've made him a little cape, you know, scarab, you know, kind of brooch pins holding on his cape. Or cloth or whatever that is. I've got a jar back here that I'm going to paint, like, glass with fluid in it, bubbling fluid. Um, that goes to this kind of controls and gauges and stuff on his staff. Now, if you read the book A Thousand Sons, which I would definitely recommend, um, A Thousand Sons talks, um, and during part of it has one of the remembrancers or whatever it is, this human psyker scribes that are running with A Thousand Sons, and uh, she's basically lost it, and the warp's basically about to burst through, and the, they have got this uh, machine hooked up with these bubbling fluids, they're keeping the etheric energy from flowing through her and just mutating her whole body to death. And eventually they turn off and she, you know, turns into craziness. Um, so I kind of imagine that that's kind of how they've stopped this. This guy started mutating. They, you know, shut him off from the etheric energy. And now this this jar with the valves and gauges and everything control lets the, uh, the etheric energy flow through the end of his staff, warping in and out like all of these different guns and everything like that. So now I've used the, uh, one of these, like, weird rat head things. Uh, from the Chaos Bits with a multi-laser shaft is the main last cannon end with a rod in the middle. So you can kind of see where I'm going with that. So that's what I'm running as my obliterators. Right now I've been using two to four of them um, in general depending on what list I'm running. Right now, um, an option I'm kind of leaning away from, but I, st I really do still like it, is uh, Demon Prince. This is what I've been using with my Demon Prince for now. Um, still trying to find wings I really like to put on him, but this is an Egyptian model from Reaper Miniatures, and he's a little bit, he's, well, he's about as tall as a Demon Prince, but he's not as wide. Um, Demon Princes, you always want to give them wings, you always want to give them Mark of Zant because you're playing Thousand Suns after all, and you always want to give them Bolt of Change in my opinion, second power is kind of up to you. It was always warp time for everyone before, they just nerfed warp time, warp time recently in an FAQ, so it's kind of up to you. I've been trying Bolt of Change and Wind of Chaos, and I've, I've been pretty happy with the results. Demon Prince is going to um, get up in everybody's face. He's going to take off a lot of shots from your other armor, like your Vindicators and your Defilers, even off of your Rhinos. He can pop transports, charge the guys inside in the same turn. He can, with a little bit of luck, rip through Land Raiders. Um, so he really is just, he's, he's fast in close combat, he has a lot of attacks, he is really strong, he has a good and vulnerable save. And, um... He really can take a lot of firepower, and he can really dish out. He can kill squad of space brains, you know, collect cast space brains, things that aren't fearless. He can pretty much wipe out a squad in one turn. Um, just they'll do one or two wins to him. He'll do, you know, four or five bad leadership, and 
they're gone. So, um, definitely consider running a Demon Prince. Always give him wings, seriously. Um, Araman, of course his staff fell off again because it falls off all the darn time. Araman is your Thousand Sun leader. He's like a lot of points, but in my opinion he's worth it. If for no other reason than because he looks cool and it's fluff. Um, so Araman, he has pretty much access to all of the non-dedicated um, uh, Psyker powers, so he doesn't have the Nurgle one, the corn, or the, the Nurgle and the Slanesh one, but he has all the rest. He can turn things into spawns. He can try it three times per turn. That by itself is very useful. So you get up too close to a Lysander, use three Gifts of Chaos, all you need is one five and he's gone. So Aramin, in my opinion, is definitely worth it. Um, they did nerf him as well recently, which kind of sucks. So now he can't fire three of the same weapon um, shooting psychic power anymore. But he can still fire three shooting psychic powers, just not the same one three times. Um, in, to me, really, he is just great support. It's nice to have him and a, and a uh, aspiring sorcerer shooting bolts of change out of a single rhino. So I always run him with a squad of Thousand Suns, brings him up to ten. You can still fit all that transport capacity in a rhino. So you're kind of set there. So that's kind of... Uh, uh, also, I've been considering lately um, running Thousand Suns Raptors. So I might be converting some of those soon. I'm sure I'll show you guys as soon as I start on them. Might be as early as next week. Um, general idea for the Raptors, probably going to have Thousand Suns converted to be moving around a little bit differently, a little bit, more, a little bit more dynamic. And the whole squad is going to have Mark of Zange, quite obviously. And they're going to have, uh, which will give them a 5 plus invulnerable. And they're also going to be on floating, on like the clear stems, on custom made discs of Zanch that I'm going to work on. And they're all going to have basically halberds with, uh, with a built in kind of a bolt pistol on the end. So kind of like some of the, some of the people have made some Grey Knight ones with built in storm bolters, kind of something similar to that. So they're flying around, you know, swinging their halberds, shooting their bolters and that kind of shit. Um, wearing Thousand Sun headdresses and stuff. So the idea with them is the Thousand Sun army is very slow. I've been having a lot of problems with games where yeah, I can I can defend my objective all day long. Someone gets too close, I'll just embark two squads and I will wipe out everything near it. But with the Thousand Suns, you know, you kind of you have to kind of hold your objective back because you can be outmaneuvered really quickly once you're already holding your objective and you can wipe everyone out. Then you have a real hard time getting to the opponent's objective, or getting to a second or third objective. So, the idea with the Raptors is make them as fluffy as possible, paint them like Thousand Suns, give them Mark of Zange. They do bring a little bit of extra Melta to the table, which helps me again with with my um, Armor 14 problem. And uh, you can use them as a screen for your Rhinos on turn one, since they're getting a five plus invuln. The Rhinos can get a four plus cover. Um, helps everyone out. But overall, really, the big thing is it's going to really help me sweep the flanks. It's going to help me get to the opponent's objectives. It's going to help me stop, slow them down, bog them down midfield while I blast them. Um, the Thousand Suns uh, threat range is really 24 inches. That's pretty much as good as it gets for you. You have a few shots here and there, stuff like from the Defiler, from Obliterators that are a little bit better. But Bolt of Change is 24 inches. Your Bolters are 24 inches. You're slow and purposeful, which is awesome, because you can move and shoot your Bolters 24, AP3 Bolters. But your real threat range is really only 24 inches. So until someone gets in that sweet spot, you're really not touching them hardly at all, which is where I really feel the Raptors are going to come in. So I'm going to try them out. I'll let you know how they work. But in general, that's pretty much all I've been using. I tried out Lesser Demons for a long time. I really like them, but I feel like the Raptors are going to fill the same role. They're going to be that quick-moving, jump into combat, tie things up until every, the rest of my army can catch up and, and you know finish them off. And the, the Lesser Demons have done a great job of that, but they're a little bit unpredictable. So I'm going to try out some, some uh, Raptors in the same kind of role, see how that works. Terminators can be really good also. They can all take combi weapons, so I would look into that. But um, in general, uh, this is how I've been running my Thousand Suns. And um, so this is kind of a long video, but it really gives you a sense of what the Thousand Suns are, how they work. So I'm going to go into a little bit more detail in the next video. So if you guys are starting a Thousand Suns, hopefully this is good information you still need, even though it took a long time to get it all to you. So watch out for the next video. Probably going to be about half this length, 10, 11 minutes. Um, and I'm just going to show you pretty much the same things I've just talked about, but a little bit more visual and kind of maybe give you an example list or two I've been using. So um, thanks for watching, guys, and thank you for playing Thousand Suns and not playing cheap-ass broken stupid armies that I don't want to fight. So I uh, will see you guys in the next video.